You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. Okay, so it has been six days of officially being testing positive for COVID, and it has definitely kicked my butt. I think we all have different times and ways that we actually feel like we can get it out. And sometimes it does take getting sick or being pushed to a point where you're really stressed that some of the stuff that you're holding on deep, deep inside needs to come up and get out. Hello there, and thank you so much for joining me today for a new episode of the A Bit From Within podcast. My name is Felicia. For those of you who might be new around here or listening for the first time, I usually struggle a little bit with how to introduce myself. It has been because I'm going through a little bit of an identity crisis, especially with my profession. And sometimes when I get on the podcast, I feel like hiding that part of myself. And yet it's something that I think about every time when I say like, I'm Felicia. And then I think, how do I describe myself? So I will just speak from the heart right now. I am a self-care advocate. I am a gentle yoga teacher. I also teach meditation. And truly, I am just a recovering perfectionist with a heart that is super big, trying to figure out her way in the world, trying to figure out how to be not only strong for other people, but also learning how to be strong for myself and have good boundaries and good um, self-care routines and good professional boundaries and follow my heart and all the things that so many of us are trying to figure out right now. And every week I come here just to share a little bit of that journey with you, share some of the stuff that I've been thinking about going through, stuff that's working, stuff I'm struggling with, just a little bit from within. So that's what we're doing here today, and I will say that today's episode will probably be on the shorter side because I am recovering from COVID right now. And if you tuned in last week, it is pretty ironic because last week I told the story about how the week prior I was in isolation all week because I had a COVID exposure from my mom, and I was trying to keep my partner safe and make sure I didn't get it, and then was fine, and then Lo and behold, ended up contracting it that next weekend. I have a feeling that we got it from the wedding we're at because I'm still working as a wedding photographer. Um, And the entire experience with COVID has been um, really eye-opening. So I want to share more about that with you and especially about the day that I had today because it was a little bit of a doozy. But first, let's take a moment to talk about what is happening astrologically right now with our little astro check-in. Last week, we had our full moon in Capricorn, and it, it sounds like so many of you had a really beautiful time kind of celebrating this summer full moon and doing things to actually honor yourself, whether your ritual was a combination of connecting with fire as I kind of represented in the lunar guide actually going out to water, seeing the reflection of the moon kind of ripple across the beautiful waterway. Um, I know others of you out there actually made like a tea, like a, a moon tea. That is such a beautiful way to kind of capture all of that moon magic. You know, full moons are really a time where that light is shining so bright and it's there illuminating something for us. And I think a lot of times what happens is it kind of brings this culmination moment. Sometimes when you're there, you are more in a celebratory mood um, or you are just filled up with emotions and um, convictions and you're kind of holding a lot of space for things. At other times, sometimes that fullness actually leads to feeling like, okay, something's got to go now. Like I've, I've gotten myself to this place and in order to keep going, there's stuff I have to let go of is kind of this natural um, cyclical process of taking and fixing and building and then editing and letting go and letting it morph into something else and then starting all over again. And as of right now, as I'm recording this, we're actually about 10 days away from the next new moon. But before we jump to that place and we already want to start thinking about what we want to manifest and what's coming next, I want you to remember to take advantage of this very powerful and often overlooked aspect of the lunar cycle. And that is really the last quarter moon phase. 
the last week of the lunar cycle. During this time, it is a really good idea to start to slow down. You can think of it as like allowing yourself to move into the darkness, almost like energetically preparing yourself for like a beautiful night's rest, as though the sleep that you're going to get is going to be a time where your dreams are so magical and so powerful that like the things that you dream of become images and, and manifestations in your real life. In order to get that beautiful sleep, you have to prepare yourself, right? So you have to spend time kind of letting go of some of the stuff that has been building up inside of yourself and letting go of some of the things that are in your way, maybe some obstacles. Sometimes that actually means doing something about it, like actually having to get stuff off of your list or action things that haven't been put into place properly. And for many of us, it means actually carving out time in our life for ourselves and to slow down. Now, I will be honest with you. I am like the worst at this. And it's something that, you know, dealing with COVID, it has come, you know, like blown up in my face, like how bad I am at resting. I really struggle with it. So if you struggle with it too, one, please know that you're not alone. But two, if you are struggling with resting, then it is a sign that it's an area that you need to put more work into. And I wish I had a huge mirror right in front of me because that is something that I need to tell myself. So I'm going to let myself soak in that message. It is something that we actually have to prioritize and figure out, you know, how do you start carving out space? Do you carve out 20 minutes in your room and put on some gentle music and stretch your body? Do you allow yourself to go on a slow nature walk and listen to nature sounds or sit by a creek somewhere? Do you allow yourself to go just put your feet in the dirt somewhere outside? Or, you know, bake a loaf of bread in your house, but instead of having to do it with you know, your computer on the edge and doing multitasking and listening to audiobooks and things like that, like just focus on measuring the ingredients of putting it in the oven, of waiting for the smell of the bread, you know, like how can you slow down and be more in the moment? This is a beautiful, beautiful time to do that in this last quarter moon phase. And sometimes I also think that it can be a really good time for actually being very artistic because so much of the lunar cycle we spend focusing on initiating and building and creating and journaling and and doing all of this stuff kind of leading up to the full moon and then again doing things doing things and some people think that creativity or being artistic is that same kind of output and while there is an output there's also something that is very spiritual about the process of um, being artistic and for many of us being creative is a release so whether you are on your yoga mat and you are finding a flow and your body moving is your expression and it is a release whether you are a painter and you paint on canvas or you do stained glass or you um, create something outside in nature It doesn't have to be with the expectation that it's, you know, something you're going to post on Facebook or sell or something like that. It could be something that's just for you. It could even be a doodle. Um, But finding a way to meet yourself creatively, this is a beautiful time for that because you deserve to kind of express it. Put all of the feelings that you've been gathering and moving through and experiencing that have been specific for this lunar cycle put it into a way that you can tell the story through another form of of something else and see what it does for you especially in these final days leading up to the next new moon which is july 28th And the last thing I'll share while we're in the little astro check-in is that this week the sun is moving into Leo. So we are kind of saying goodbye to cancer season and we are moving into Leo season, which means, yes, we are in the heart of summer, in the second month of summer. And Leo is a fire sign. It is a fixed fire sign. So it has this reputation for not only being very kind of 
proud and again creative and kind of a show off and so charismatic but it's also this um, kind of stubborn sign that is very good at moving its energy in a very particular forward way and Leo is a sign that is also associated with the fifth house which is a house of creativity and children and play and sex and so if you feel like it, and I highly recommend it, um, get into your playful side this month ahead. And you can even start planning it out now if you're not as spontaneous. Maybe you can plan to be spontaneous over the next month. So this will be from July 20th until about August 21st. When we'll, then all this year is flying by. We'll be moving into Virgo season. Um, and I will share with you a little bit of Leo self-care. The first thing you have to think of is fun. So again, that's going to look a little bit differently to everyone, but some, I think more Leo forms of fun would be like going out dancing or having a dance party in your living room, moving your body, um, but especially in that kind of creative or sexy way. Um, kind of getting into that sexy side of yourself, right? Whether you want to kind of dress up a little bit or if you want to work on your body so you feel like feel yourself a little bit more. Um, you could put on like a YouTube video of like salsa dancing, something that just spices it up. And of course, speaking of spice, this is a good time where you can eat some kind of fun foods, especially if you like spicier things. I'm a huge fan of Thai food, Mexican. I mean, I love spice. So any of that, this is a really good time for that. Um, and it's a good time to connect with your friends and your loved ones and your siblings and people in your community that you have fun with. So if you want to plan like a girl's trip or a family vacation or those kind of things, like this is a great time for that. I will say that passion is a big theme for Leo as well. So you do kind of have to have a little bit of maybe discretion with how you're going to manage some strong emotions that can come up from yourself or from others. Um, that's something I would kind of watch out for, but just remember like it's part of the human experience to be passionate. So just do your best to navigate that the best that you can. Um, that's just a little food for thought for this, this upcoming month ahead. Um, okay, let's take a quick break. I'll come back. I'll share the story of catching COVID and how it's been. And then we'll wrap it up for today. It's going to be a shorter episode, and that is okay. Okay, so it has been six days of officially being testing positive for COVID, and it has definitely kicked my butt. And there's a lot of people out there who say that COVID is really mild or whatever, and I know that it obviously... We all know that the symptoms vary from person to person, um, but I will say that for me, it's obviously not been like I haven't been hospitalized, so I feel like I have a lot to be grateful for, but I've been pretty sick and it was all just kind of a crazy story how it unfolded because if you listened last week, you know, you heard me share about how I had been sleeping on an air mattress. <laughs> that was losing air for the the past week um isolating from dave because my partner dave has been sick with you know long covid for the past 11 months now and there's not a lot of information out there on what happens when you get infected with covid um and you already have long covid there's a little bit of information, but there's a lot that's not known about it. And it's not something that we really wanted to have to deal with because we don't want things to get worse for Dave. And so we moved into the clear and I thought everything was fine. I was feeling like some of the same allergy symptoms that I had already been feeling. Um, but then on Tuesday night, you know, Dave started to complain of like getting a sore throat and I, I guess I kind of felt it, but I also, again, it, it didn't feel any different to me than I already had for the past more than a week, more than the day that I had been exposed. Um, and it was very, very mild. So I did I really didn't think anything of it. So when I woke up on Wednesday morning, um, I walked downstairs and Dave was down there and he was doing a, a, a COVID test. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So he, he is not feeling good. 
And um, I'm again, this is not medical advice. I'm just sharing the truth with you guys. He actually swabbed inside of his throat and he very fast was positive. So after we kind of freaked out a little bit, I took a test and I took it in my nose the way um, that I had been doing it and it was negative. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I should just try one in my throat and see if it is different because I am starting to feel a little bit of that sore throat as well. So <clears throat> did the swab in my throat and sure enough, about five minutes into the rapid test, the line started to form and it was just a faint line. It never got super dark how Dave's had, um, but it doesn't matter. We were both sick with COVID and it's kind of a surreal moment, you know, when you're, you know, two and a quarter years into a pandemic and you've never had that positive before. Um, and it's interesting because over the past week, so many people that I know who've never been sick with COVID before have got it for the first time. And, and honestly, that was in some ways a little bit comforting that there are friends that I could reach out to and say, like, how are you doing? How are the symptoms for you? Like, what are you doing to manage everything? Um, luckily, Dave's working with this an amazing functional medicine doctor, and he was able to get an appointment with her right away and get some meds and have his supplements readjusted. And um, I was able to start taking a lot of the same supplements. So tons of, gosh, what are all the things we're taking? Like vitamin D, vitamin C, um, quercetin. Um, I've got like this wild cherry bark syrup. Um, trace minerals, zinc, uh, glutathione, NAD. Um, ugh, there's just a ton, a ton of stuff that we're trying to supplement our bodies to be strong to fight all of this. And, you know, the first day, honestly, it was, you know, not, not horrible. Like I felt like it was not in my nose. It it felt like a tickle at the bottom of my throat. And then I just felt like a heaviness in my chest. Like, actually, I remember I, I kept feeling like there's like a cat sitting on my chest. That's what it felt like. And I thought, OK, this is probably going to be as bad as it gets. We'll keep going through this. And then Thursday, I thought, um, well, this is definitely starting to get a little bit worse. And at this point, you know, I was kind of confused because I thought I really did think I was like, maybe at that point, I thought maybe this is a positive test from the previous exposure. So like maybe we're at the tail end of it. And then as we started to move through this, I realized like, nope, we definitely must have got more recently exposed, um, like probably that previous weekend, because this was the very beginning for sure. And I did make a telehealth appointment with my own um, primary care physician who was able to give me some medication. And, you know, when I talked with her, I was very grateful that we were on the same page because I didn't, and this is just a personal choice, but I just didn't want to take anything that was being um, under emergency use. Like there's just a preference that I had. And so um, she actually, the treatment plan that she suggested was one that I was very much on board with. And so basically she just gave me some albuterol and some prednisone and that worked for my symptoms and my health and my age and my you know general um, medical history and so um, the conversation that we had was very much like you may not need this like you may feel a lot better and you may just decide to like skip the prednisone altogether but you're going into the weekend and if things get a lot worse like you're gonna want to have something on hand and so got the medication and Friday I was like oh this isn't so bad like I at that point had moved into like a very deep cough um but and I, I was having some fatigue and some brain fog and the other thing I was going through was just like really extremes to like being hot and cold but not running a fever so like my fever never like went above 99 but 
I would be like sweating one second and then like freezing the next. And so dealing with that on Friday. And then Friday night was no fun. Like Friday night was really rough. I don't know if it was coming off of the full moon or if it was COVID or whatever, but like I could not sleep. And as soon as like 10 o'clock hit, 10 p.m., my nose became so congested, but it was like a stuck congestion. And I felt like I could not breathe at all through my nose. And it felt different than a cold. It felt like like literally like a complete blockage like I could not breathe through my nose and breathing through my mouth like into my lungs well I guess it's always breathing into your lungs but breathing through my mouth was also like felt very constricted and so that's that night I had a ton of anxiety about breathing and feeling like I couldn't breathe and I just started really thinking about all of the people who felt that way and even worse that ended up losing their lives and how terrifying that must have been to die at home feeling that way and just having that kind of infection it's just really really scary um and I didn't end up falling asleep that night until like 3 30 a.m or something like that like ridiculous hour and I woke up <laughs> at like 7 a.m and I couldn't sleep anymore And that was rough. And I knew that that wasn't the best thing um, for my body, obviously. So I kind of just holed up on the couch that day and I started taking prednisone that morning. Um, Prednisone is a, you know, it can be a stimulant. So it's better to take it in the morning as opposed to like at night, which is why I didn't start it in the middle of the night, even though it's probably could have how it all went for me. But um, started the prednisone, hold up on the couch. And, you know, this is where I honestly, and I have some kind of shame around talking about this because I wish I could say that I was like this perfect patient that laid on the couch and watched movies and drank water and ate vitamins and just let the healing process take over. But I'm going through so much in my life right now with my business And June was a huge month for weddings, and there's just so much that I'm trying to figure out right now, and I'm studying to get my official certificate in astrology. And so I just, especially when I'm laying on the couch, I just feel this pressure to be doing other things. So I spent most of the day editing weddings on my couch and watching movies too and drinking water and doing the best that I could to take care of myself. Um, And... That night, I did sleep. I slept like 10 hours that night, which is very much needed. And yesterday, when I woke up, I felt really good. I mean, obviously, I still have this really wicked cough. And I, it actually, the cough started to move up into my nose. And so I started to get really congested in my, in my nose. Um, but in general, like I had a lot of energy, so... Of course, instead of resting, I felt like, okay, well, got to catch up on laundry. And because the previous week was already so out of whack, it's like our carpet hadn't been vacuumed in like eight, nine days. And we have a dog, so it gets really hairy. And like, it was a mess. So I vacuumed and, you know, did just, I was like, okay, this is it. Like, this is day five. This is it. We're on the mend. Like, I want to get into the week with fresh energy. Everything's going to be okay. And then last night, like 10 o'clock hit, and it was like I was wired. I could not turn my brain off. I was coughing. I couldn't breathe again. That same thing that happened on Friday night. Like I, my nose was so blocked. I started to panic like I couldn't breathe and ended up staying up too late and I you guys I swear I tried I put my phone away I laid in bed Dave always tells me if you just lay in bed in the dark like give yourself 10 minutes you'll fall asleep and I always tell him I don't work that way my brain doesn't do that I don't have the whatever it is that flips over into falling asleep I just am not like that and so sure enough I must have laid there for like 90 minutes just 
thinking about so many things, thinking about so many people. I probably was thinking about you. I was thinking about all of the things I need to do and all of the, I was thinking a lot about my past and I was thinking about people I met at Path of Love and just, you know, you have those nights, those dark night of the soul kind of nights and eventually did fall asleep. And I knew I was like, I don't want to sleep in too late because I want this week to be off to a good start. I think I'm just so frustrated with how July has went so far. And when you have a lot of time at home by yourself, um, at least for me, when I have a lot of time at home by myself, it's like I can't, I can't help but just kind of snap into that really critical part of myself that starts to see the flaws with everything I've got going on all the ways I feel like I'm letting people down, all the things that I wish I could be doing better, all of the things that I need to be investing more time in. It's just like the um, inner critic just gets really intense. And so I was like, I'm going to wake up at a normal time so that I can get back onto a good sleep schedule. I am going to, you know, and actually when I did wake up, I felt pretty good. I was like, I'm going to take the dog outside. I put makeup on for the first time. I slept with braids in my hair, so I felt like, okay, like, I'm, I'm going to get dressed. I put, like, a real shirt on today. Like, this is going to be new energy. And then the first part of the day went okay, and then it's like, I don't even, I can't even put my finger on exactly what happened, but I started to feel like this major major pressure in my head and and the only way I can describe so much of this COVID stuff is it's like obviously it's like a cold or it's like a flu or whatever but it's also like nothing I've ever felt before like some of the sensations that I have felt in my lungs in my heart and in my head that I've had while I've had COVID are things that I have never experienced before in my life even like the brain fog like I could be in the middle of a sentence and have no idea what I'm talking about. Or I could be looking at a page where like to pay a bill and I've always seen like the, you know, the link for the bill pay. It's very obvious. I can't find it. Like things like that. Like it's just things aren't quite normal. At least that's been my experience with COVID. And so today I started just to get... It was just like the spiral of all spirals. And I ended up just having this breakdown, <laughs> having this breakdown. And I won't go into all the details because it's vulnerable and it's hard. But, you know, I will share that a lot of fears came up. And for me, a lot of fears came up around, you know, like, am I going to heal from this? And a lot of sadness came up for me from how, you know, painful this experience has been for me and how these are the symptoms that Davis had and worse and with actual heart issues for the past 11 months. Sorry, I'm going to start to get emotional because I just feel so bad that I didn't realize how much discomfort that he was in and how scared it is to feel this kind of thing in your body. I thought I was being empathetic towards him and I thought I was being as understanding as I could. But sometimes it takes actually feeling it in your own body to say, holy shit, like this is what you've been feeling and worse for 11 months. That is terrifying. And you know, it just brings up a lot of the stuff between him and I and you know, to be, again, to be transparent, like there's this part of me that's like scared about like, you know, what if it's like the ultimate like karma that like I'm going to end up like dying suddenly of like myocarditis of something or something because wouldn't that just be how life is like, which is so silly and it's totally catastrophizing and you know, even now, the strains that we are getting, even though they are serious, like, they're not leading as to as many side effects like that. Um, so I have no reason not to be hopeful and not to trust my body. And that's the only way you can go into any healing thing, right? But I am nervous about Dave. I'm nervous about him um, having a reoccurring affection of um, myocarditis. 
kind of worried about what this is going to do to him. Although I will say that he seems to be like 16 hours ahead of me with COVID. And like everything that he's had, he's had just like half a day before I have. And so far he's not relapsing and he's not showing signs of relapsing. Like he has the deep cough and like a lot of the same stuff that I've had, but, um, it's not quite, it's not, it's not as bad as it was when he first came down with symptoms last August and it's not affecting his heart and he's not having the wild, you know, unregulated heartbeats. He's not going into NSVT, nothing like that. So we're just going to keep a close eye on him. We're going to pray for the best. And, you know, as far as my little mini meltdown today, there was just so much that had to come up and that had to come out. And sometimes I, you know, I'm not, and I don't say this with self-criticism. I think we all have different times and ways that we actually feel like we can get it out. And sometimes it does take getting sick or being pushed to a point where you're really stressed that some of the stuff that you're holding on deep, deep inside needs to come up and get out. And I think that's what needed to happen today. I just needed to cry my eyes out and cry about everything and cry about fears around my body and cry about COVID and cry about Dave and cry about mm, literally everything. I mean, at one point we were both just laughing at how silly it was, but at the same time I had tears coming out of my eyes just because it's a lot. And it's not just a lot being sick with COVID. It's a lot navigating this world. It's a lot dealing, living in a world where inflation is so high that you're looking at your budget and you're thinking, how are we going to do this? And then on top of it, for me, I'm changing my business and I'm trying to grow a new business and I'm getting closer to this deadline that I've put all this pressure on myself. And that's bottom line, like what a lot of this comes down to and probably what contributes to my inability to to rest in a um, unrestless way. <laughs> that's a silly way of saying it, but I just, I have a huge opportunity to actually rest and to give my body what it needs. So that is something that I'm learning and it is something that I need to be more committed to. And so I'm going to try and keep trying. And that was one thing that I was appreciative that Dave and I talked about today is he is just like, you know, we don't quit no matter what. We don't quit. And I feel that with every inch of my body, I don't quit. I got to keep going. So... So speaking of which, I think this is where I'm going to wrap up the episode for today. I'm sorry that it didn't have any, you know, major takeaways, at least none that I would know that you'd have right off the bat. But I hope there's, of course, you know, something a bit here that you can connect to or relate to, um, whether it's comforting or inspiring or makes you feel a lot better about where you're at. <laughs> That's a possibility too. And there's plenty of space for that as well. So um, yes, I will end there today. But I will say let's do a card drawing. And I think it's time to go back to one of my old favorites, the Wild Offerings Oracle by Tasha Silver. Let's take a nice deep breath here and see what the universe wants to contribute to today's conversation. forgiveness. Healing comes from acceptance. Help me, dear Lord, to fully accept what is, knowing that this alone will open me to the new. You know, that card, I'm sure, could have so many in different interpretations, but obviously there's something about that that I feel like very much directly connects to everything that I just shared, just around acceptance and finding true healing. 
And I will say that I didn't think um, that it was I, I really that ironic at all that we ended up getting sick with COVID on this full moon of the summer. And it does feel kind of like um, this time to, you know, put so much of what we've been dealing with behind us because this will be the last full lunar cycle in the year since Dave's been sick because the next one will kind of be included in the anniversary. So I kind of count that as like separate. And it's just, yeah, we got sick on the tested positive the day of the full moon, which is kind of like this, again, this time of illumination. And I just keep thinking there's so much here to let go. There's so much around forgiveness. There's so much to be reconciled. And so I just, that really, you know, struck a chord in me, this idea that the healing comes from acceptance and fully accepting what is alone. That alone will open to the new. And I have to accept what is with all of this as much as I just want to flip a light switch and be over this and be teaching yoga with my community like I couldn't do yesterday um, and seeing faces and just launching new projects and getting a move on everything and feeling like everything's going to be okay. Life is not always like that. We don't always get what we want when we want it. And that doesn't mean we can't keep aspiring and keep trying, but we do... We have to collaborate with the universe and with God. And we have to be open to being where we are. And sometimes that is a tough pill to swallow. So anyway, that is it for today. Thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for um, all of your healing wishes. For those of you who have been reaching out, it means the world. Um, I will be back next week, hopefully with more positive message or at least a better story in some way um in the meantime you can connect with me i haven't been posting much on instagram or tiktok but you can always connect with me there i've got some great content on pinterest a brand new blog article came out last week with all the affirmations for your moon sign and if you don't know how to find your moon sign you can check out my youtube video on how to find it Um, so if you're interested in that totally check that out And yes, please um, stay connected. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.